Local doctors say a popular drug used to treat bipolar disorder and seizures caused a disease that killed an Austin police officer. He died six months after a new FDA warning was issued for the extremely rare side effect of Lamictal. The widow of Norman Bujanos tells KXAN investigator Aaron Cargyle her husband might still be alive today if more doctors knew about the risk. So the U.S. Food and Drug Administration put the safety warning out in April of last year, saying Lamictal can cause a serious immune disease called HLH that can feel like the flu, high fever, body aches, and can lead to death if not diagnosed and treated quickly. At the time, the FDA knew of at least eight cases worldwide, one resulting in death. Today, according to the FDA website, the number of cases reported has gone up to at least 81 with eight deaths. Norman Bahanos is one of them. You know, looking back on it, it's just so unbelievable. The whole thing, the whole chain of events, everything that happened. Just over a year has passed since Amy Bahanos lost the absolute love of her life. Her best friend for 25 years, the father to their 11 year old daughter, and a burglary detective with the Austin Police Department, passionate about solving crimes. But over time, Amy started noticing a change in his behavior as he struggled to deal with the tough parts of the job. I don't know that there was like one specific thing, but it was just a gradual shift with everything that he had to see every day a kid was killed and he you know just he would wake up like have nightmares like seeing the kids dead body laying in the street worried about the effect his mental health was having on his family and work norman who had a family history of depression decided to see a psychiatrist i was happy that he was going because i felt like he needed you know there were things that i couldn't help him with Medical records show the doctor diagnosed Norman with bipolar disorder and wrote him a prescription for Lamictal, a drug that's been on the market since 1994. You know, 25 milligrams, one tablet per day for two weeks, um, then to take two tablets per day for two weeks, and then four tablets per day eventually, and then it says stop taking and call if you have a rash. There was no rash, but 11 days after Norman started taking the generic version, Lamotrigine. He came home from work and said, He's like, I just don't feel good. He's like, I feel really achy. I feel like I'm getting sick. That night, he had a fever of 103. Medical records show over the next several days, he saw a doctor who ruled out the flu. And when he didn't get better, he saw a physician's assistant. Neither were concerned about the Lamotrigine. One believed his symptoms were viral, the other bacterial. Both recommended over-the-counter pain meds for the fever, which he took. But Norman kept getting worse. And I noticed his eyes were a little bloodshot and he um, hadn't gone to the bathroom and he just, he said he couldn't eat and everything, his whole body hurt. His back hurt, his chest hurt, he had this dry cough, like everything just hurt. Norman finally agreed to go to the emergency room five days after the symptoms started. Blood tests revealed his liver and kidneys were abnormal. And for the first time, an ER doctor raised a red flag about the new medication. She's the one that said, I think it's, I think he's having a toxic reaction to the Lamictal. Amy called the psychiatrist's office and shared the information with an on-call doctor. He was like, I'm sure I've never heard of that. You know, that, that's never happened before. And he writes in the notes, unlikely to be related. Norman was transferred to a bigger hospital where he was treated by Dr. Jeff Yorio, the hematologist who would eventually diagnose him with Lamictal induced HLH. Hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis. So it's pretty complex immune activation disorder. Basically. Dr. Yorio says it's a tricky diagnosis. Hospital records show the conclusion was confirmed through blood cell testing and a bone marrow biopsy. At this point, Norman's organs were shutting down. He was losing his ability to think and speak and was eventually put on a ventilator to help him breathe. Dr. Yorio says he only sees about four to five cases of HLH a year, which can be caused by other things including infections and cancer. This was the first case he's seen caused by the mood stabilizer. Norman's team of doctors tried to treat him with steroids and chemotherapy. HLH can be cured, but Dr. Yorio says the key to saving a life is recognizing it early. Certainly the earlier you know you can make that diagnosis, the better. The earlier you can start on treatment, the better. For Norman, it was too late. He died on October 17th with Amy by his side. It's been hard for me. It's been hard for Jordan, you know, not having her daddy here. 
and um, having to tell her was the hardest thing I ever had to do. The very next morning, Amy started spreading the word on Facebook. And I said, you know, there was an FDA warning that came out in, uh, in uh, April of 2018, but for some reason, no one knows about it. And not just doctors who saw Norman. You know, you get my sister, who's a pharmacist, and my brother-in-law going, I have patients that take this, and I had no idea. And if the FDA puts this warning out, what do they do to make sure that doctors and hospitals and pharmacists are sharing the information with their, with their patients? And that they know about it. And that they know about it, right. How do you, as a physician, learn about it? Yeah, so a lot of times the, the drug company that makes it has to issue, you know, warnings to prescribing doctors that this is a new black box warning or a change in the prescription. Um, they do the same thing to pharmacies. Amy went back and found all the paperwork and doctor's notes Norman received regarding Lamotrigine. While the new FDA warning was printed on this sheet of paper he got from the psychiatrist, the doctor's handwritten notes only indicate he verbally warned Norman about developing a rash. Amy believes if the FDA warning was on everyone's radar, the disease could have been caught sooner and her husband may still be alive. He wanted to help people. And if this could help somebody else, then to not have the same thing, I know that's what he would want. According to the FDA, if you're taking Lamictal or Lamotrigine, the highest risk of HLH is in the first three weeks you start taking the drug. Here's a look at Lamictal's medication guide. This is what you should get with the bottle at the pharmacy. The section here is about HLH, but no mention of death. It does mention serious blood or liver problems that can lead to fever, muscle pain, weakness, and fatigue. Lamictal says physicians get a much longer, more detailed version. And the FDA says it puts out the warning along with the drug makers and at that point it's up to healthcare professionals to use their own judgment in communicating that information to the patient. You reached out to Norman psychiatrist? I did. I called several times and left several messages explaining the story that we were working on and asked if he's doing anything different, but we have not heard back. And Norman's wife says that the family didn't receive the same benefits that other police families get after death. That's right, Sydney. Norman died during the period of time when APD officers were without a working contract. Therefore, his wife and daughter were denied more than 600 hours of sick pay, which equals more than $20,000, according to his wife. You'll find Find more on that plus a statement from the maker of Lamictal in this investigation at KXAN.com.